Thank you for tuning in to Naja Speaks. I'm Naja Wright Brown, co-owner of the Land of Kush Vegan Soap Bistro in Baltimore and executive director of the Black Veg Society. And I'm also contributing for Jane Unchained News. Um, we have a very, very, very special uh, guest today. So I really can't wait to bring this person on. Um, introducing Dr. Selesh Rao. <laughs> How are you doing today? We're going to be talking about um, what the vegan world convergence is. You know, what is it? It's been going on for a little while. But let's talk about you first. Let's um, find out um, something. Tell the viewers a little bit of, uh, about yourself, Dr. Rao. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Naja. I, uh, I'm an engineer. I'm a systems engineer. And I uh, used That's to work That's big time. On... That's big time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I used to work on the internet back in the 90s. And, oh, wow. <laughs> and then in 2005, I happened to see Al Gore's presentation on TV, and I was so shocked. I said, if half of what he's saying is true, I'm wasting my time. Wow. So I decided to look into it. Uh, my wife actually said, you know, if you think it's that important, go ahead and study it. And so I looked into it and within a couple of months, I realized it's far worse. So I, uh, we closed our company and I wrote to Mr. Gore and I said, how can I help you? So that's how I got into it. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Like that was was an immediate change. Um, so at that point, did you become a vegan? Not right away. Okay. See, I was a vegetarian at that point. Okay. okay. I was, I mean, so I thought I was only consuming dairy. I'm not so bad. Right. So I thought I was not so bad. And then um, the more I studied it, the more I realized that, you know, dairy may be a huge issue. <laughs> Yeah, it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was thinking the inflammatory, maybe, inflammatory part of it, definitely, right? <laughs> right, but you know, but when you look at the papers, the scientific papers, they portray that dairy is not such a big deal. Okay, so they even show lacto vegetarian is only slightly worse than vegan. Hmm. Uh, in fact, there are papers where they show lacto vegetarian is better than vegan. <laughs> what really? Yeah. I, yeah. I suffered a lot of problems um, consuming dairy and didn't even know back then. And I'm glad I know what I, I, I know right. now today. So right. how did um, the Climate Healers uh, organization come about? And what's the organization's mission? Yeah, so uh, it was during uh, the training with Al Gore, I asked a question about um, animal agriculture. And he basically brushed it off, you know, so he... Um, <laughs> Why do you think? <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he actually turned to Roy Neal, his chief of staff, and he said, how did this guy get in here? <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so he didn't want to address it. So then I said, wait a minute, you know, it looks like they are talking about how to make money off climate change. I'd rather focus on how to really solve climate change. So I, I started Climate Healers in 2007. When I started, it was called the Lighting Project. Okay, So I was working on one particular aspect of it. I was going to help people who are um, uh, using kerosene for lighting. I was going to give them solar lights and then claim carbon credits for all the lights, uh, all the kerosene they're not burning, and then use that to fund the lights. That was my business model. So I went to this village in uh, India. Uh, I sent all these lights over. I went to the village. And within half an hour, my business model fell apart. <laughs> oh, wow. What, what <laughs> happened? Why did it fall apart? Because the women said, what lighting? We, we we don't use kerosene for lighting. <laughs> they said, why do you want to change the night? God gave us night so we can go to sleep. So, wow. wow. So then I asked them, so what do you use all the kerosene for? Because they were getting three liters of kerosene per month from the ration shop. And they said, well, we use it to start our cooking fires. Ah. Okay. So that's when lighting project became climate healers. Oh, I, wow. Yeah. So because I, you know, I said, I said to the women, if we, if I gave you solar cookers, will you use them? And they said, oh, show us how to make our food. Of course, we'll use them. So that's how it started. Okay. Nice. And, and as part of that, um, I asked them, you know, I told them, if I have all these lights, so if I give them to you, will you, will you use them? They said, sure. So I gave every household two lights. Okay. And went back six months later to see what they were doing with it. And uh, meanwhile, I hired a company to build a solar cooker that will cook their food. And so when I went back to the village in December of 2008, 
I had become the hero in the village. Everybody, everybody loved me. I said, what? What happened? And uh, apparently between August and December was uh, snake bite season in the village. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So women used to get bitten by snakes. Wow. Especially women. Wow. Because women have to go out into the forest before the men wake up to do their business. Okay. Yes. That's the custom. Okay. Yes. And and during winter, it's it gets really dark when they're going out. So they're stepping on the snakes. And when they step on the snakes, the snakes bite them. So that's how they were getting snake bites. And so every year, that village used to have 20 to 30 snake bites. And two to three women used to die from snake bites. Oh, and in 2008, they had zero snake bites because wow. they, had a, they had a light. They had the light. That's Dr. Right. Celeste Rao brought the light and saved the village. That is an amazing, amazing well, story. I, <laughs> I had no idea that's what I was doing. Okay, so. <laughs> That's an amazing story. You are definitely a hero. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So we, again, we are here today, everyone, if you're just tuning in, we're going to be talking about what is the vegan world conversion. Before we get into that, I'd just like to know, what do you eat, Dr. Rao? What are your favorite foods as a vegan? Oh, I, uh, we make a lot of the traditional dishes. Uh, but we make it all completely whole food, plant-based. Oh, you're saying my favorite word. <laughs> whole right. Plant-based. So what is, what is that? Look, what are you eating uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? So for breakfast, I usually just eat fruits uh, and make a smoothie maybe. Sometimes I make a smoothie with the greens we have and bananas and fruits. Um, for lunch, I typically make some traditional foods, usually you know, I, I make a soup called sambar, which is a traditional food that my mother used to make. But she used to add oil for uh, roasting the spices. I just okay. dry roast the spices. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it was already whole, almost whole food plant-based to begin with. Okay. Okay. Right? And then we typically make these uh, fermented rice cakes, rice and lentil cakes. And so we, we actually grind up the rice and the lentils together, and then we ferment it overnight. And then we steam it. Nice. And that's called uh, idlis. And it's one of my favorite foods. And my granddaughter loves it. You know, for her, she calls herself an idli monster. <laughs> awesome. I, I definitely have to try that. That is amazing. So we're here because we know there's challenges. There's challenges yeah. that we're facing with advocating for veganism, whether it's from the animal rights perspective, environmentalism, health, world, hunger. What are some of those challenges and what is being done to address the challenges, Dr. Rao? It is a, you know, it's a whole systems issue, right? So that's what It's the I mean. system, everyone. It's the system. It's a system. It's a system. Okay. The system, it has everything coded in it, you know? So, the, so I, I mean, think of it as a game, okay? Uh, this is what we do as human beings. We, we tell stories. And we play games. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it goes on in all the countries, right? Is that what is exactly. that? That's also happening? Okay. You're hearing it right here live. That is what's happening. Okay? Right. So we tell stories and we play games. And the kind of stories we tell determine how we act in the world. And the kind of games we play determine what kind of system we are creating Okay, for, for our daily lives. So... The game of money, the way it has been coded, okay? So, you know, there are rules of how you create money. Only banks can do it, not you and I, right? So, <laughs> right, exactly. So using that mechanism, they have coded racism, colonialism, ableism, speciesism, patriarchy. It's all coded in the system, in the game itself. Because that's how it's set up, right? So as long as we keep playing the same money game, we will have all these things built in. There's nothing you can do about it. You are stuck with it until you change the game. Exactly. So we have to change the game. So we have to figure out a different game that codes our values. What are our values? Well, they have already told us all men are created equal, meaning all men, women, children, they're all created equal, right? All of us are created equal. So that's fundamental rule we need to put in the game. 
Second is we all have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's also yes. there. Yes. And I said, let's quote it because it's not there now because they tell you you have a right to life and then they tell you you also have to earn a living. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> if I had a right to life all along, why do I have to earn a living? You know what I mean? That's the opposite. Right. So they're telling us one thing and doing the opposite. And that's why that's because of the way the game is coded. So we need to code this. You know, everyone has a right to life, meaning they are guaranteed okay, that they belong in the community. Right. The community is going to take care of you. You'll have at least you know, healthy food available to you. You'll have a shelter available to you. You have clothing available to you for free. Yes. Okay? Then you choose what you want to do. How do you want to contribute to the community? Okay. So then, uh, so that's a different system. It's a different game you're playing. And the second is, you know, the, the right to liberty, right? So they tell you, you all have a right to liberty. And then we have implemented, you know, a system where uh, we have the most incarcerated population in the world. So wait a minute. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Dr. Rao's breaking it down for you, everyone. So listen up. <laughs> right? So so you're saying one thing and doing the opposite. That's what I mean by that, right? So, so which means there are some foundational flaws in how we have implemented the game. And the third is the pursuit of happiness, right? So we, they say we all have the right to pursuit of happiness. It was given to us by our, by our creator. Well, why is it then half of Americans are on antidepressants? or anti-anxiety medications, or illegal drugs on a regular basis. So exactly. did we mess up? Of course we did, right? So let's figure out how to create a game that codes these three things correctly, right? And that, to me, is what the Vegan World Convergence is about. That's what we are doing. We are figuring out this new game. We are figuring out this new, new stories that we need to tell. So that everyone, it resonates with everyone. And they say, I want to belong to that. You know, I don't want to be where I am. And so um, it's it's about fashioning a, a, this transformation. Because I see this as a transformation that's happening in humanity. Okay, Going from our caterpillar stage where we were just munching and eating, you know, we were just consuming like crazy, behaving right. like caterpillars right. to the butterfly stage where we are sipping nectar from flowers and we are pollinating the flowers. We are regenerating life. So we become like the caregiver species of the planet, the climate regulating species of the planet. Okay. So the vegan world conversion, this is not the first one. You've been doing right. this for some time. How long uh, has it been? And um, how has it been going so far? Right. Well, I, let me begin at the beginning. Which is, <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> it always starts with my granddaughter. Okay. It's Timaya. Yes. She's the one who, who originated this. She's the one who actually changed my life. Okay, I love it. Born. I love it. The granddaughter inspired granddad. Beautiful. <laughs> she changed my life when she was born. Uh, anyway, I mean, so this particular thing happened in 2016, okay, where I had been studying the environment, you know, and I knew how abysmal it was, uh, how fast we were killing animals. So, so we are, we have been killing. Um, we had killed fifty-two percent of wild animals between two thousand ten and between nineteen seventy and two thousand ten. Okay, and that became fifty-eight percent by two thousand twelve. And this is a comprehensive survey of three thousand five hundred species that the World Wildlife Fund has been doing since nineteen seventy. So this is not. You can't, you know, you can't say this is wrong, right? So right, you, exactly. It's so I look facts. at that and I say, wait a minute, you lost, you lost three percent per year. How many years do you have before you reach a hundred percent? And it turned out to be twenty twenty six. Wow. Okay. Do you think that's the intention, Doctor Rao? Because people know what's going on. This is facts, the studies, um, and, well, and we we have to come up with a vegan world convergence to address this. So this is the community stepping in and us trying to change the system and do we have to do to save the planet. But why, yeah. you know, is the support really, really low? You know, you talked about capitalism and, and things like that, but why wouldn't people want to just step in and say, hey, let's stop this because this is what's going to happen in 2026. The animals it, are going to be extinct. Right, but, but I think people are stuck in the system. 
right? So there are a lot of people who are stuck in the system. And there are very few, a few people who are really running the system. I mean, they're like way up there because they are the ones who own all the banks, you know, it's like few, a few of them. And I think they just don't have, I mean, they're, they, they have been, their compassion has been completely encompassed in iron or steel or something. I don't know what happened. So, right. <laughs> so they can't feel it anymore. You know? Right. So, right. So they are literally continuing the system, even though it is killing us. It's, del it's deliberately killing us. Okay. So it's killing all the animals. We see that. Okay. It's, they, we killed 52%, as I said, by 2010, 58% by 2012, and it became 68% by 2016. So it's going in the same rate. It's going to hit 100% by 2026. So, but that's wild animals, right? So they don't even care about that. That's like out of their sight, out of mind. Now they are farming people. I mean, they're killing people too. I mean, look at all the people who have diseases, right? So chronic diseases. These are yeah. all. Yeah. You know, these are all design. These are by yeah. design. Let me show you this map. This is uh, heart disease uh, wow. deaths in the United States. Wow. Yeah. This is amazing. St still the number one killer, you know, yeah. before right. COVID. And right. probably because of COVID, a lot of more people are dying. Right, right. It's So it is, you know, it's by design because they're making money off these diseases. So we have a system that makes money of death, disease, and destruction. You know, death for the animals, diseases for human beings, and destruction of the planet. Because very we selfish, the... very selfish, very greedy, right. and definitely not an expression of love. Um, so the world vegan, uh, the vegan world conversion has been been going on for seven years. Well, and no, 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 more sorry. than that. No, no, <laughs> okay. it's actually the seventh one. <laughs> But okay, we started in 2018. Okay. Uh, 2018, okay. and then we did 2019. So initially, it was just once a year, right? Ah, okay. And we were meeting in person. Okay. And then COVID happened. Yes. And then, you know, uh, in COVID, when COVID happened, we said, okay, we can meet in 2019. No, we did meet 2019, 2018, 2019. And then COVID happened. And then we decided to meet once a quarter. Oh, oh, okay. And to, online. And, yeah, to accelerate it. It's right. an emergency. Once a year right. isn't isn't working anymore. Right. Um, so this is where we're at. So I'm showing everyone um, the the flyer of the Vegan World 2026 is taking place this weekend. And I'm going to put it in the comments. And we have um, a couple of people that have chimed in since we've been talking. Uh, so it's taking place October 23rd to October 24th. And um, all the information just got put into the comments in, in terms of how you register, you know, website. And uh, this is an engagement of speakers, very passionate speakers, presenters, filmmakers, uh, food alchemists, artists, and uh, a whole lot more. I'm going to be speaking on Sunday, um, talking about bridging the gap uh, through campaigns that I've worked on. So I'm excited about mm. that. What else can we expect, Dr. Rao, at the Vegan World Conversions this weekend? Uh, you can expect to have your mind blown <laughs> every time it happens to me. It happens to me. Okay, it's not just <laughs> it happens to me every time. Every convergence I've been to, I'm just amazed at what people come and teach me. You know what I learn from you, what I learn from other speakers. Uh, that improves me. That makes me better at what I do, and and it I think it works for all of us. You know. Everyone who comes and listens goes through the, I mean, attends the whole convergence from morning, um, from it starts at eight o'clock in the morning in Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and goes on till um, 9 p.m. Eastern time and 6 p.m. Pacific time. Wow. So it's 10 hours each day. 10 and, hours, everyone. Yeah, each day. And I assure you, those 20 hours over the weekend, you will be drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I mean, I, I I I attended a couple. I know I sat on a panel or a discussion in one of them, and it's just a lot of information to absorb, but it opens your mind, which is the right. most important thing that we have to get out of this um narrow mindset or this, you know, one way of thinking, like it's not my problem. You have to right. find out 
um, how you can be the solution. I see someone here. Thank you for tuning in, Laura. Boycott meat and all other products of cruelty and exploitation in any way possible. And our, the passionate people, we could say this, you know, until our throat is sore. <laughs> um, but we need to get to the majority to understand that, you know, because some people are like, boycott me, I'm going to eat my meat. Like, how do we get to that market? And we need to right. have a lot of different creative ways of doing that because, again, it is all marketing and it is something that we're going against the system on. So to be at this conversion, th this convergence, um, you're going to, people are going to take away a lot of information and they're just like you did when you heard Al Gore say something, you know, right. and how it touched you and right. um, how your granddaughter came into your life and, and, and your granddaughter is touching you. And my, I didn't even ask why is that? Why is it that your granddaughter has this impact on you? Oh, yeah. So it began when she was born. Okay, so uh, when she was born, I was probably the most depressed environmentalist on the planet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because, wow. Because wow. I'd been studying this for four years and I thought we were going to hell in a handbasket. There's nothing I can do, you know. So we are the only species that doesn't belong on Earth. Take human beings out and the planet will be fine. That's the conclusion <laughs> I agree. You know? Take human beings out and the, and the planet will be fine. That's the conclusion. I, I, I know this wasn't a diet. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, there was a comment guarantee, right? <laughs> <laughs> I put that in guarantee. <laughs> so I thought we were the only species that doesn't belong. Okay. So, and then she was born in 2010 uh, in November. And I noticed that my wife just disappeared. You know, I mean, we were living in the Bay Area. She was born in Phoenix. And my wife just disappeared. I mean, she would go off and see my granddaughter and come back a week later and then go off again. <laughs> and finally, she told me, you got to go see this girl. There's something magical about her. So I went to see her when she was a month old. And, you know, I held her in my arms for the first time. And I thought I was holding humanity in my arms. Because, you see, she has all continents in her she is born she is a asia from us our side her mother is half african american half american indian i mean it's like i saw all of humanity in her and i was holding her and she looked up at me and she had this knowing smile <laughs> and she was like she was saying what do you mean i don't belong i belong exactly <laughs> as i am right <laughs> And you're a fool. You haven't understood me yet. <laughs> okay. So instantly I got that message in me saying, oh my God, she belongs exactly as she is. And we all must belong exactly as we are. And I'm just not seeing it yet. I'm not telling the right story. So I got to go study this. So I went back and I started writing my first book right away. And it just poured out of me, the first book. It's called Carbon Dharma. Okay. Dharma is what is the right thing to do. Right. And which is very easy to figure out, you know? I mean, it's not complicated to figure out how to live, right? So it's just be kind to everybody. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Love, yes. Be kind I to love. all life, right? And you're done. I mean, yes. planet will be fine. Everyone will be fine, right? Uh, but then I had to figure out what were we doing all along? Because, you know, her smile had told me that we were perfect all along. See, I mean, I had seen this, okay, in the forest. I had been to a, to this sanctuary where uh, I saw an elephant breaking branches of trees. And I asked the owner of the sanctuary, hey, isn't that elephant being destructive? And she said, no, everything the elephant does is part of the ecosystem. Right. So when the right. elephant breaks branches of trees, that's where the sunlight streams to nourish the underbrush. Whenever the elephant, you know, uh, tramples on bushes, that's where new pathways are formed in the forest. Wherever the elephant goes and drops huge mounds of poop, that's where new jackfruit trees are born. <laughs> she said everything the elephant does is part of the ecosystem. The elephant has no choice but to be part of the ecosystem. Right. So I said, wait a minute, if that's the case, we also have no choice but to be part of the ecosystem. So what were we doing all along? Exactly. So Exactly. And that took me five years to figure out. Okay, so I wrote my second book in 2016 uh, called Carbon Yoga. It took me five years to figure out, even though the answer was staring at me in the face <laughs> all along. Yeah, but it happens to a lot of us. So <laughs> I know, <laughs> but but you know, and you look back and you say, "What the heck? You thought? I mean, you couldn't even see that." It was because 
as soon as you acknowledge that uh, humans are changing the climate of the planet, we automatically have assumed responsibility for maintaining it, for maintaining that climate and right. make it, keeping it stable. So we are the climate regulator species. So that's exactly. why Mother Earth spawned us and said, you go and figure out how to stabilize the climate. Okay? Exactly. exactly. And that's what we have been doing unconsciously for the first 10,000 years in this time, uh, in this warm period. And now we have to start doing it consciously. That's all. Exactly. That's the thing that's happening. Right? Daya says, Dharma versus karma. Thank you for that. And thank you, Kamaya, for uh, touching granddad so that um, he can help us uh, <laughs> with being heroes well, <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> in, the, in this, new, this new world, you know, right. this day with the new world order. Um, who are some other uh, guests or speaking um, uh, speaking topics at the the Vegan World 2026 this weekend. So again, here is the information, folks, and I, I posted it uh, in the comments. Uh, you can also yeah. go to climatehealers.org to to get right. some information as well. So who else? You know, because it's a lot. That's 20 hours. So yeah, what, 20, what well, 20 hours, and we have three rooms. <laughs> yes, it's, so it's, you can go to yeah. one room or you can go to the other two rooms. So, uh, so it's, I think we have totally about 38 or 40 hours of programming. Wow. And um, yeah, so it's, it's a, there's a lot that we are, screen, we are screening three documentaries. Uh, Which and, documentaries are you screening? So we are screening um, Plant Pure Nation. And, Plant Pure Nation, okay. And Nelson Campbell will be there to do a QA. and a the, okay. the executive, the um, creator of the documentary. And then we are screening A Prayer for Compassion. A prayer for compassion. Okay. And Thomas Jackson will be there. And we are also screening Eating Our Way to Extinction. Eating Our Way to Extinction. Right. So, yes. and that uh, we will have Dr. Joanne Kong and um, Jared Bishop to do the QA after that. They are, they're both in the movie, featured in the movie. And then we have the keynote addresses by you uh, <laughs> on Sunday morning. Uh, we have keynote addresses in the evening on Saturday by Dr. Russell Mars, who's uh, who wrote the book on nutrition, on uh, naturopathic medicine, and so he's going to be speaking about veganism and naturopathic medicine. Yay! Then, love yeah. it. That's my and thing. Then, I love and, naturopathic medicine. And then on uh, Sunday night, uh, the keynote address will be given by Rabbi Shmuley Yanklowitz. Uh, who will be talking about uh, the spiritual underpinnings of veganism. Nice, and, nice. That That yeah. is a full pack. Now, will there be, um, people would have to attend it this weekend, there's no replays or, or able to see it oh. again? Will it be, how, how, you know, people can't do the full 20 hours? Right. Everything that we have done is on our Trello board for okay. free. Anyone can watch whatever we have done in the past. They can watch it. But, uh, I, I mean, it, you're going to have to binge watch because there's so much stuff. Yeah, so much stuff. Yeah, but I, I can see people catching some things here, there, and right. then they're like, okay, I might have to take a break and then come back. And there's a lot of stuff, and I'm sure people won't want to miss it, especially those topics that they're really into. So it's good to know that that you can absorb some, you know, digest it, and then be able to catch up. Um, right. you know, if not this weekend uh, during the week or something like that. So that is amazing. Um, do you have any other upcoming events that you're going to be working on? Because, you know, this is your mission. This is what, what right. you're doing, right? Right. Yeah. We have a, a big campaign going on at, uh, for COP26, which is the UN climate change meeting in Glasgow, Scotland. That's major. So, Yes, yes, I'm preparing for that, and in uh, and so there's a lot of prep work that's been going on for that, and um, so that's going to be from October 31st through November 12th. Wow! So I'll be in Scotland from uh, October 29th through November November 12th. So, uh, so I'll be back in November 15th. You know, hopefully we will have made made some big changes. You know, in the world, that's that's what we are hoping to do. Yes, that's what we, we have to do. You know, we hope that do. H and hope needs to come half, have to do. We have to do this. So again, Vegan World 2026, the seventh convergence this weekend, October 23rd to the 24th. Um, 
climatehealers.org. I've also posted links in um, the, the social media sites so that you can click, register, get information on speakers, all types of stuff. Everything is there for you in um, the, the comments or go to climatehealers.org. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the comments as well. Um, is there any really strong message? And you have a lot of strong messages, mm. Dr. Lau. So you really got to dig deep in like, what is that one message that you would want to send to everyone that they can absorb and leave, start their day with um, yeah. to understand the importance of this all? Yeah, one strong message I would have for everyone is that that it is going to be a vegan world by 2026. That's it. It's it in my mind. It's already a vegan world. Okay, so it's going to be a vegan world by 2026. Assume that, and then you figure out how you're going to get there. Okay? I That's love how it. all engineering projects are done. Uh, yes, you know, I never start an engineering project thinking I'm going to fail. <laughs> because because if you think you can or you think you cannot, you're usually right. That's what Henry Ford said, right? So this is, we have to assume it's going to be there, that it's going to happen. And then we work our way to get there. And that we, to me is, so. We have to create the future we that we want to see. It is up to us to up take to charge us. and do this. So yeah. I'm definitely feeling that message and is resonating with me. How best can we follow you? I have climatehealers.org. Uh, I know your IG is Climate Healers. Uh, any other um, information on how best we can follow you, uh, Dr. Rao? Yeah, please come and uh, join us. We sign up on our for our newsletter. So I send a newsletter every week. I also do a podcast on Jane Unchained uh, every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. I call it the Vegan World Moonshot Podcast, the moonshot of our generation. And, uh, and uh, from COP26, I'm going to be doing a podcast every day updating you on what is going on um, with our campaigns. So please join us and uh, stay informed. And this is, uh, this is, to me, this is not a spectator sport. We all have to get our activist boots on yes. and help make this world happen. And so I'm grateful for people like you, Naja, for, for stepping up and making this happen. And it's my honor and my privilege to be walking alongside people like you. Well, I appreciate that, Dr. Ryle. I was going to say the same to you. I mean, I'm inspired by all that, that you're doing because it really takes a lot to just listen to someone, drop, you know, what you thought your future was going to be and transition in something else. And you're doing an amazing, amazing job. Uh, I, I see a lot of power in you. And um, mm. I'm sending you many, many, many blessings and also to your, your grand daughter uh kamaya because i have, a, nine, yeah, I have a nine year old daughter myself who's living vegan has been vegan from the womb and um wow. yeah exactly from the womb so <laughs> we have Aren't a lot of work amazing? to do Aren't exactly amazing? <laughs> exactly exactly so and, and uh navigating in this world and helping right. people to understand that you know we, we have to go vegan we have to transition we have to save the planet uh stop harming the animals and, um, you know, take care of our health. You know, right. that's the true wealth right there. So I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, my, my sponsors, uh, Veg Fund, A Welfare World, e ETC Impact, Mercy for Animals, NutritionFacts.org, Women Funders and Animal Rights, uh, Stray Dog Institute, Collectively, and Default Veg, and individual supporters such as yourself, viewers that are listening in, and um, reaching out. So definitely please uh, continue to support. That's how we're able to uh, bring you uh, this, this, this content. And Dr. Rao, I know you're really busy uh, saving the world. So um, I appreciate you taking this time out uh, to talk to me and um, promote the event. Again, here it is again, everyone. Uh, it is the Vegan World 2026 conversion happening this, convergence happening this weekend, October 23rd the 24th um get engaged if you and if you have friends that are not vegans you need to be inviting them to this event these are the people that need to be attending i don't care if they stay watch one thing a screening or something you need to be inviting your non-vegan friends 
to to uh, this conversion. So please, um, you know, take take responsibility and do that. It's very, very, very important. Um, we have one more comment. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in. Daya, we appreciate your comments and stay blessed, stay well, and stay safe, everyone. Thank you.